elasticity and plasticity. We know that both are properties of solid. And any type of loading, for example normal, shear or mixed loading can result in either plastic or elastic deformation. Before doing a comparison study, let us see what is elasticity and plasticity of the material. First, elasticity. Just imagine I am applying a load on a material. Normally, when a load is applied on a material, the material tend to deform. When such deformation is very small, the structure can recover its original shape and size once the external load is removed. So such a deformation which is temporarily and easily recoverable is called elastic deformation. In other words, the ability of a material to deform under a load and return to its original shape when the load is removed is called elasticity. If you take an example of a spring, when you apply force, the spring will deform. When you remove the force, spring will retain to its original shape. From this stress strain diagram, we can understand that the stress is directly proportional to the strain during this elastic region. And that is represented as a straight line because most engineering materials display linear behavior within this elastic region. That means the amount of deformation is directly proportional to the amount of load acting on a material in this elastic region. Can you say which material is more elastic, the rubber or steel? If you don't understand elasticity, you may say rubber is the most elastic material. Because most of the people think that elasticity and flexibility is same. But that is not same. Elasticity of a material can be determined by Young's modulus. The material which has more Young's modulus has more elasticity. Let us consider rubber and steel wire of same length and same cross section. For example, the rubber and steel wire length which I have is 100 mm. If I want to apply a force to increase the length to 105 mm, the Young's modulus would be stress by strain equal to force by area. Stress is equal to force by area and strain is changing length by original length. So we know that the force required to stretch the steel wire would be much much higher than the force required for the rubber therefore F2 is greater than F1 that means F2 stands for the force required to pull the steel wire from 100 mm to 105 mm and F1 is the force required to pull the rubber wire from 100 mm to 105 mm therefore the Young's modulus of steel is always greater than rubber so we can conclude that the elasticity of steel is higher than the elasticity of rubber. Next, plasticity. So we know that elasticity is the material ability to return back to its original shape when the force is removed. What if the external force applying on the material is higher than the intermolecular force of the material? When intensity of external load exceeds the capability to elastically sustainable limit, the material starts to deform permanently which means the structure loses its original shape and size and this retains its deformed shape and size even after the removal of the load. So plasticity is the ability of a material to deform under a load and retain its new shape when the load is removed. In this image clay is changed to a new shape when force is applied and it is not going to back to its original shape. In this stress strain diagram, you can see the elastic region and plastic region. The stress strain diagram is non-linear in the plastic region for all the materials. Let me read out the comparison study between the elasticity and plasticity. First, the elastic deformation is a temporary deformation under the action of external loading, whereas plastic deformation is the permanent deformation. Second, the amount of elastic deformation is very small, but the amount of plastic deformation is quite large. Third, energy absorbed by the material during the elastic deformation is called modulus of resilience. Total energy absorbed by the material during elastic and plastic deformation region is called modulus of toughness. Fourth, most solid material display a linear stress strain behavior within the elastic region. Whereas, stress strain curve is non-linear in plastic region. 
fifth material first undergo elastic deformation under the application of external loading whereas plastic deformation occurs after it is elastically deformed due to the application of external loading sixth mechanical and metallurgical properties of solid material remains unaltered when it is elastically deformed whereas many properties of solid material changes considerably for plastic deformation next similarities between elasticity and plasticity we know that both are properties of solid any type of loading normal shear or mixed may result in elastic or plastic deformation also we know that the plastic deformation can occur only after the material is elastically deformed so without elastic deformation plastic deformation is not possible so these properties elasticity and plasticity would be considered while selecting a material or the design and it has multiple uses based on the application let us see some of the uses of elasticity and plasticity elasticity is important when you consider a material for a machine tool structures or when you build a bridge or other civil frames an equipment's body or outer frame and many household structures because we want material which is unique which can absorb lot of energy uh, without any changes during the normal usage conditions similarly the plasticity is also important when you consider for sheet metal working various forming operations such as rolling forging extrusions etc rivet joining and many other applications similar to that i assume that you got a fair understanding on the elasticity and plasticity and its comparison and its applications hope this video is helpful please share your comments